name's Will Mitchell. Um, I'm representing Bumper Crop. We're from Florida, and in Florida, uh, everybody that you know either grows their own oranges or knows somebody who does. And what ends up happening is these people grow plenty of food for themselves and their family, and then a whole bunch of extra food. And there's a huge growing consumer demand for that locally sourced fresh food, but there's currently no way for them to distribute it to them. So, and it's not just Florida, it's also uh, the entire country. There's 40 million um, home-based farms in the U.S. and uh, they're pumping out $18.5 billion of crop every year. Over half of those farms are less than 100 square feet, so it's a very common problem for people. Um, what we want to do is basically create a way, a, web, a way for those sellers to have a web presence and show that they have that extra food so that local consumers can go on and find that extra food and easily get to it. Um, and we believe by doing that, we'll be able to promote healthier lifestyles, we'll be able to reduce the wastefulness that exists in that industry, and we'll be able to put people closer to their food and where it comes from. Um, so. Here's the tool that we built. Um, we try to keep the, in mind uh, while building it that our target market might not be the most tech savvy market in the world. Um, so we made it very simple to use, um, very clean. Um, you can sort through all of the different crops, you can easily find anything you want and then go and source it, connect with that seller and buy it from them. Um, so, the monetization strategy for this is um, basically a freemium based model. So, sellers would be able to go on and list or sell five or ten items, and then at that point they'd be asked to uh, make a small yearly subscription fee um, once they have already seen the value in the product. Um, and we already have uh, quite a bit of traction, quite a, quite a bit of buzz going around this. Uh, most people that we talk to uh, very much like the idea. We've talked to a lot of people that have the problem and end up throwing away a lot of what they grow. Um, so we think that it's a very, very big need that we're filling. So, oh, and uh, our <laughs> we have uh, we have been in talks with quite a few people in the industry. Um, one of them is Mr. Green Thumb, who is. Uh, has an amazing, amazingly huge reach in this market and he said that he's loved the product and he wants to help us promote it if we launch it. Um, and we also have quite a few other advisors that are pretty helpful and are willing to help us develop this. So, that's Bumper Crop. <laughs> So he's, he's the visionary. Uh, John Hartman right here is the developer. He developed the entire back end, front end, all that. Um, and I'm a marketer from Tampa. And we have two more teammates that uh, had to fly home. Um, one of which is a producer at 22 Squared, which is an ad agency. And uh, the other one is Douglas Smith, who uh, works with a VC firm out of Florida. <coughs> I'm surprised you didn't include the California hydroponics industry. Or the apartment farms in California. Do people buy locally from each other, or is that the kind of Right, it's a, it's, we want to connect people within five to ten miles who don't currently have a way to exchange food. We want to grow the community-driven food market. So you can experience it. Whole Foods to try to see what we can do with them about it. Um, and we've also been talking about Whole Foods. 
is to try to fill the inconsistencies. So if someone in an area doesn't have a crop that someone wants, then we can source it from Whole Foods in that case. So we've been trying to deal with that. How would you, are you guys uh, familiar with uh, like Local Dirt or any of these companies like that? Yeah, have you, that, that which I actually spent a lot of time looking at something. Like so uh, how would you compare to, to, these are companies that sort of connect, you know, professional farmers to, to like restaurants and sort of local buyers. So how would you compare to that? Right. Um, well, those farms aren't really in our target market because we, they already have distribution channels. They're already finding their own client lists and all that. Um, we want to connect people that are currently throwing away their extra food. We, we want the people that have food, don't know what to do with it, because there's so many, it's such a growing demand for that locally sourced fresh food. I think it's going to continue to grow into the future. So that's what we're trying to connect. We want to build that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, but specifically, you're going to say no, we're individual to individual. Yeah. And you, and you right. necessarily need to make money off of those transactions? Or is there some point where like, you know, I'm just doing it for community feel Um. Well, we'd obviously like to make money. <laughs> <laughs> Most people do. Yes. <laughs> Right, yes. At a certain point, if people get to the point where they haven't sold their food and uh, it's going to the point where it's going to spoil, we allow them from the backboard to actually donate to local food banks that really need that food. So that, that seems interesting because I mean, maybe there's some kind of, you know, uh, it's a donation, right, that they can get credit mm -hmm. for. Them, exactly. Like yeah. So yeah. that in itself seems pretty interesting. Right, like yeah, exactly. There's, there's a lot of interesting aspects to this business. I mean, I, it might be an interesting business. I'm not sure how big the market is. I think that's where I probably need a little bit more convincing if you have some data on that. Um, well, yeah, nearly one in ten people in the U.S. have... No, I get that. I'm just okay. like, how much of that is actually saleable? How much work will they do to make um, sure they keep that stuff up to date? How many people will buy from other people? Like, that's, I'm not saying you can answer that right away. That's just my objections or questions about that. So it feels like there's a lot of marketing work on your part to make sure that that works. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. You can I agree. Luckily, we have a lot of people that are willing to help us develop and push to their current client base. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Our Americans are pretty good since people are throwing it away. And they're probably yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that was the concern for, like, I know, like, in the local dirt, you know, there are a few companies that went out about the same time. So that was a concern, I think, for most of them was how big is their addressable market? You know, how hard is it for them to do farmer acquisition and get them to sort of change their behavior from sending taxes and all this other stuff right. to actually doing the transaction online? Um, and so you've got a behavioral change you need to coax too, right? Which is like people aren't used to going and saying, oh, I've got like six extra tomatoes this week. Let me put them online. Right. right. There was a pretty yeah. uh, interesting talk yesterday by Airbnb about like what drove adoption. Uh, it turns out high quality photos uh, and payment were two of the really, really key issues. Like, higher quality photos dramatically improved adoption. Uh, and yeah, so, that'd be definitely something that right, we would so be looking into then. Yeah, the, the benefit, though, there is they don't have to photograph the house more than once. You might have to photograph the food a lot. So that's my concern about making right. sure they either you provide stock photography that's really awesome for the things that they have, or else you're going to have a challenge keeping them up to date. Right. Okay, thank you. We're out of time. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys. Yeah.